Sweet. Okay, so last time we talked about describing distributions and comparing distributions, everything from the center, the shape, the spread, and the outliers. Today we're going to be looking at physically how to create different types of distributions. We already looked at the stem plot and the dot plot. But let's talk today about some frequency histograms, a relative frequency histogram, and a cumulative frequency histogram. Again, it's very important that you pay attention. One small word difference between all three of these can have a very big effect. So let's jump into it. First of all, here we go. With all the presidents through uh, President Bush, uh, does not include President Obama right now, but this is actually the ages of the president at their inauguration. You can see they're all over the place. We have, right now, we have the youngest here, I believe was Kennedy at 43. Oh, sorry, there was Teddy at 42, going up to Reagan at 69. But what I want to do is talk about this, a frequency histogram. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break off into groups. Now you'll notice here, this is called the width. And the width here is 5, because it goes 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. So this has a width of 5. And this 45, 46, 47, 48, 49 also has a width of 5. Very important when you do a histogram that you can maintain the same width as you go across. So what I was talking about here then was we could go back here to the presidents and look at their ages. However, I've already gone through and can tell you right now that there were two presidents between those ages. Then it was seven presidents there, 13 presidents here, 12 presidents here, seven here, and three there. So there were a total of 44 then presidents, again, prior to, uh, prior to President Obama. But what I want to talk about now is how do we create this histogram. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line like this, and then I'm also going to draw a line like this here. Now, let's talk about... Um, our vertical component line. The highest it goes to is 13. So what I'm going to say is, well, I'm going to go up here to 15. And then what makes this a little bit nice is I can say, well, right there's 5, and right there's 10. So that way I can see 5, 10, 15. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go again, 40 to 44. So that's what this is going to represent, 40 to 44. And then we're going to go 45 to 49. And 50 to 54, 55 to 59, 60 to 64, and then again, 65 to 69. Now, let's talk about the 40 to 44-year-olds. These went from here, and there were two of them. So I'll say, like, right here is about 1, 2, 3, Four, five. Might as well number them up. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So this first one went to two. So I'll just take it across like that, and I'll go like that. Now what I like to do is I like to put the number over top of it. That way I know exactly what I'm looking at. Now this next one here goes up to seven, and this is a very important component of a histogram. Histograms do touch each other. They don't overlap, and they don't have gaps in between. Like I wouldn't have missing from 40 to 44 and then start the next one here at 52. They do some um, sandwich right up to each other. So then this one here goes up to 7, comes up like that, comes over, and comes down like that. And there's 7. Now this next one from 50 to 54 goes all the way up to 13 and comes over. And then again comes down. So that's 13. 12 would look like this. That's, again, the 55 to 59. 7 again here. And then 3 here. What's really nice about a frequency histogram, first of all, you can tell it's a frequency because it has the actual counts, which we had here. These are count values on the side. So that's a nice thing about the frequency. 
But what else is really nice is now we can see some other things. We can start looking at how to describe this distribution. Back here, it'd be hard to describe it. Now over here, we can start talking about what we talked about last lesson, center, shape, spread outliers. Now, let's talk about a relative frequency histogram. The biggest difference between this one, we have our counts, and then what we're going to do is look at our counts inside of this amount here. So you can see I started setting them up, and I left this last one off. Just to show you, what we're looking at here is we're saying 3 out of the 44 had ages between 65 and 69. So then what we can do with this is talk about this as a percent. So looking at this one here, 0.0454. So right about 4.54% had of our presidents were between the ages of 40 to 44. I'm just going to leave it as a decimal. And then I can do this one as 0 0.1590, 0 0.2950, 0 0.2727, 0 0.1590, and last but not least, 0 0.0681. And then what we can do with this is the exact same um, piece that we did before, where I can now come over. I can have my lines. I can have my lines going vertically. But this time, when I set my vertical scale, I can see that the highest amount is about 30%, 29.54%, 0.2954. So if I come up here, I'll make this 0 0.30. I can make this 0 0.10 and 0 0.20. And now it's the exact same thing. This is that first category. This is 40 to 44, and that went up to about 0.0454. So right there, and just like before, 0.0454. My next one, 45 to 49. Let me go ahead and mark these off. 50 to 54, 55 to 59, 60 to 64, and 65 to 69. And then just like before, here's right around uh, 15, 0 0.1590, 0 0.1590. And this one goes all the way up here to just a hair under uh, 30. So I'll do it this way there. So again, 0.2954. This one here is right around 0.2727. Now, while I'm doing this, one thing I want to bring up, you might add up all these values and see that it doesn't exactly equal 1, but it should. There could be some rounding errors there. I just want to make sure that we don't get wrapped up around that. And here is, again, 0 0.1590. And last but not least, Point zero six eight one. The way you can tell a relative frequency, first of all, when we talk about relative, we're saying relative to the presidents. The other tell is it's going to be a decimal over here. It's like a percentage. Now, one thing I want you to take a look at, take a look at the shape of this graph, of this histogram, and that histogram. The shapes look the same because we haven't changed anything. We're just changing how we're looking. Are we looking at percents or are we looking at counts? That's all we did there. And when we do a relative frequency histogram, another, um, another component we sometimes look at is one called the relative cumulative frequency histogram. Which helps you really see percentiles. We'll talk about percentiles. What a percentile represents is how many, what percent of people earn less than or equal to your value. So let me show you what that looks like here. So right here we have our cumulative frequency table. So right now, if I add up all the values, right now I'm at 0 0.0454. But again, this is a cumulative frequency. So for this next value here, it's not 0.1590, it's this 
plus that value to get me, if I add them together, I get 0 0.2045. And then if I add that one there, I get 0.4999. And if I keep doing this process, 0 0.7726, 0 0.9316, and just so you can see again, you won't get exactly one, but you should get one. That's what it should be. And that's what a cumulative frequency table looks like. It's also called an ogive sometimes. It's, it looks like ogive, but it's pronounced ogive. And this would be the ogive for the presidents. And what's nice about this, I can say here, 50% of all presidents were how old? Yeah, we can see right there, it's about correction. It would be if I take this line here straight across. So we could say approximately eh, 55 years old would be a pretty good bet. So that would mean if you were 55 years old, you were at about the 50th percentile of the presidents. Now, if you were 50 years old at inauguration, then we're looking at the age. We can come up and we can see that value here looks to be maybe just a little bit less than 20%. So that's how you can use an ogive here. So again, today's lesson here, really looking at the difference between a frequency histogram, which is a count, a relative frequency histogram, which is a proportion, which is going to give you some type of a percent, and a cumulative frequency histogram called an ogive, which is going to be able to help you see percentiles. So I hope, uh, hope this helped you out. As always, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to contact me, and we'll see you next time.